Whatever you decide to portray, you can, with imaginative camera angles and composition, do much to determine the mood and effect of your video. The difference between a satisfying video and an indifferent one is how well the shots work together. The secret of videoing is to obtain a number of shots which will form a sequence. But to do it successfully, you need to know how different shots follow one another and how best to frame the shots. So I'm going to try to shoot something very simple, a sequence showing this trusty boat here passing through the lock up ahead. Of course, the easiest way to shoot it would be to point the camera with a wide shot and occasionally zoom in and out. Maintaining one shot like this one can become wearying to any audience, even if they have a particular interest in the subject. Simply zooming in and out can look clumsy, ugly and can be very irritating to watch. Just turning the camera on and off without changing the picture produces a very odd effect. What I really need to do is shoot a variety of different shots, choosing the pictures which will engage your attention. After all, if you were here, your eyes would be continually darting about, picking up different points of interest. And that's really what we should be doing with our video camera, using it as a pair of eyes. I could start with the lock keeper operating the controls, keeping the shot going long enough so that we can see what he's doing. Or I could show the water emptying out of the lock. I could take a picture of the boat waiting for the lock to empty. Clearly I need a shot of the lock gates opening. And eventually, the picture of the boat leaving the lock. Being able to have a variety of different shots means that we can compress time so that something which actually takes quite a long time to happen can be shown on tape in a matter of moments. So a mixture of different camera positions and an assortment of different pictures can make any situation more interesting to watch than having just one shot maintained for a long time. This video was made by Kate Douglas over a year ago. She made the mistake of trying to video this procession and take part in it at the same time. This year she wanted to video a sponsored walk to raise money to restore an old monastery. But this time Kate was prepared. She had examined the route of the walk planned what she was going to shoot, and didn't even try to participate in the walk herself. She moved to different locations, leapfrogging the walkers to obtain varied shots in a number of different settings. Kate had to drive ahead of the walkers to give herself time to prepare the shots.
Last time, she was always in the same relative position in the procession, which limited the kinds of pictures she could take. This time, the results were very different. you video, paying attention to the composition of your pictures will help to convey the atmosphere you want. Experiment with your camera to achieve different effects. Out of focus shots at times can be just as effective as clear, crisply focused pictures. Here are some very simple ideas of picture composition that you might find helpful, but don't follow them slavishly. This picture of the couple walking looks uncomfortable. We can't see where they're going. Their position in the frame is too far to the left of the picture. If we position them further to the right in the frame, then as they walk, we can anticipate where they're going and can feel more involved with what's happening. The big wheel may be very pretty, but placing the camera square onto it gives it a very flat, uninteresting feel. A more oblique angle, combined with something in the foreground, helps to lead the eye to the wheel and to give a feeling of depth and perspective. Maintaining a wide shot of the dodgems records everything that's happening, but it's all too small in the picture to really know whether people are enjoying themselves, and this picture can very quickly become tiring to watch. Closer shots using the telephoto lens help identify the pleasure of the people on the dodgems and also increases the sense of speed and bad driving. In this shot of the couple walking towards us, it's very easy to be distracted by the bright, confused background. There's nothing which makes us want to look at them. If we move the camera to a more oblique angle with some foreground and then follow them in the picture, they become the centre of interest. If we're meant to be looking at the couple, then placing them low down in the picture is a waste. We don't see much of them, and what we see above their heads isn't much of anything. So try and position people in the frame so that their eyes are roughly around the line that marks off the upper third of the picture. This applies to most situations, no matter how close the shot. But the most general rule when taking a shot is to try and consider what is important in it. Decide what you want to show and then concentrate on shooting it in the most effective manner. I'll run this one up and then as soon as it goes into frame on the picture, if you drop... Peter and Richard Simmons made their first video when they decided it would be an effective way of publicising their local steam society. For them, it was a very carefully planned operation as they thought it important that it should look good to achieve its purpose. Well, we're both members of the, the Coombe Mills Society and um, we wanted a means of publicising our activities to local associations, local schools, steaming associations. And although we've done tape and slide, it's fairly complicated for somebody who doesn't know what they're doing to set up tape and slide successfully. And more and more people are getting video recorders and playback, so we thought that this was perhaps the way to go. And really it was an experiment, it gave us a chance to play and it also provided us with a short publicity film. The first thing we did was try and write down the story in, in, in the storyboard, the, the kind of list of rough shots. 
A storyboard is just a visual plan of the most important shots in a video. Many people find the storyboard useful as it helps determine what they will video and whether it will tell the story they want. And of course on the day it reminds them of the shots that they need. You don't have to draw pictures though, you can simply write down a description of the shot. Right, when I say go, can you wake up, reach out and switch the light on and then give a good yawn? We've got to start by getting people's attention. That's why we started the way we did. In fact, the beginning we did at the end because we filmed all the rest of it and then thought, well, how are we going to actually make people sit up and look at this and listen to what we're telling them? If you just start saying it's about a steam engine, then people who are not interested in steam engines switch off. So you've got to try and attract their attention, which is what we did with me getting out of bed. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks very much. Okay. Right. Right, if you can just hold the card sort of about there in front of the camera. Richard found that he had to be scrupulous in resetting the white balance when he moved from indoors to outdoors to ensure that the colours came out correctly. Yeah. Right, when I um, say go, what I'd like you to do is to go into the house and then wait a couple of seconds and then come out, shut the door and walk past me to here. OK. OK, go. Because of the way video cameras function, it's always advisable to run the camera for two or three seconds before the point at which you would like to see the shot begin. Again, always leave the camera running two or three seconds at the end of the shot. What the video camera records is always slightly shorter, as it has to start the tape running at the beginning, and at the end, it clips the recording to prepare for the next shot. OK, go. Richard is building up a sequence of shots which they've already planned to show Peter leaving home in the morning. If we look at how these two shots go together, not only is the time it takes for Peter to walk to the car reduced, but importantly, the shots match each other and cut together. In the first shot, Peter leaves the picture on the right of the frame. The following shot has Peter entering the frame on the left of the picture. This combination produces a smooth flow. But if this shot had been followed by Peter entering on the right of the frame, it would have looked ugly, like this. To maintain a sense of direction between two shots, the subject leaves the picture on one side of the frame and enters the new picture on the other side of the frame. These two shots don't go together very well. If you watch Peter's hands carefully, there's a jump as she appears to put the car key into the door twice. Matching action between two pictures so that it appears to flow continuously is very difficult with home video because of its basic lack of precision. When I say go. Richard avoided this difficulty by introducing another shot, that of Peter's yeah. face looking down at the car door as there was less apparent movement and the shots flowed more easily. So with the additional shot, the pictures now cut together. When they later added commentary, they had the opening sequence to their first ever video. Ugh, good grief. Seven o'clock on a bank holiday morning. Most people who don't have to go to work are still snug in bed. And what am I doing? I mean, by the end of the day, I'll have done more heavy manual work than I usually do in two days at work. Still, at least I'm not alone. Some of the crew should already have set to with oil, wood and polish. I bet what they're doing now 
isn't much different to what some people did in the 19th century. A wedding is an event that everybody wants to remember. With this ring. <coughs> with this ring. I thee wed. Just as no wedding is complete without a photographer, increasingly today no wedding can be without someone to video the event for posterity. With modern video cameras, we can take successive shots without any disturbance between them. So by just using the camera, we can make a complete video ready to be seen as soon as the wedding is over. Amen. Sid Goring has been making videos of weddings as a hobby for the last couple of years. He's become quite expert, discovering most of the pitfalls. To prepare, you've got to work out a system of action on, for the day. And the best way of doing that is to do yourself a storyboard. Um, every sort of important shot that you're going to do, uh, write it down as a mind jogger on the day. Sid arrives early at the church so that he can record the surroundings to set the scene for the wedding. All his wedding videos are edited in the camera so that they are immediately available to be watched afterwards. This requires much skill and planning, choosing the right shots and being ready to video at the right moment. He takes close shots of the guests, as not only are they more interesting than wider ones, but the shots flow easily from one to another, as we don't have to worry about the geography of where everyone is standing. The idea is to get candid shots of the guests. I think that once a person knows he's being recorded, then it's time to stop recording them because they get all stiff and unnatural and <laughs> they may do some undignified things that <laughs> will cause them great embarrassment later on. A wedding video is going to be watched mainly by friends and relations. They'll probably want to see themselves and everyone else, so Sid tries to include everybody present. More often than not, the stills photographer will do all my work for me. He sets up the groups, which I take advantage of. He controls the crowd, and in actual fact, I think he's the most important man at the wedding. So, after the stills photographer has finished his shots, Sid moves in to get his. Now, if you could put the rings away, just behave naturally and walk slowly towards the church. OK. Thank you. If someone has agreed to be videoed, then they're usually happy to help to make it look good. While shooting this, Sid is anticipating the next event. Be in a position as well to get the shot of the bridal car in the distance. As it approaches, you go into wide angle, you'll have a, a great shot of the bride and the father, possibly through the window if there isn't too much reflection on it. The still photographer then will uh, probably open the door for the bride and sit her on the seat with the legs out of the car. And this is a great opportunity to get a close-up of the bride's face. He'll then take a few shots of the bride and the father together. And providing you don't take them too long over it, I'd advise anyone to get these shots and fade out as they're walking towards the church. Otherwise, they're gonna beat you to the altar. As soon as you've got the white balance and you think everything's okay, then fade into a shot, a relative close-up shot of the groom and the best man, uh, exchanging nervous conversation, the way they normally do, or uh, a wide-angle shot of the church.
position Sid has chosen to video the wedding itself is crucial to the overall quality of the recording, as you can't move around in the church during the ceremony. The camera needs to be positioned so that it can see the faces of the bridal couple, yet remain discreet and unobtrusive. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? You've got to really know, before you go into a wedding, what a wedding service is all about. I... Andrew Robert. I, Andrew Robert. The experienced professional wedding videographer could probably perform a wedding himself. He knows what word's coming next. He knows when the bride and the groom are going to kneel. So then he'd go into a wide angle shot rather than suddenly have them disappear out of the viewfinder. In sickness and in Sid knows the words of the wedding no. ceremony well enough to be able to anticipate when to change the shot and to follow the actions of the participants. I, Sarah Jane. I, Sarah Jane. This is my song. This is my song. I think the most important thing is that you vary the shot occasionally. Um, it, to close-ups and wide-angle shots to sort of vary the mood of the actual ceremony. Perhaps moving from face to face, composing the scene a little bit differently by drawing back on the zoom or zooming in that little bit closer. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife. With careful planning, knowledge of the details of the ceremony, and always anticipating the next event, Sid produces excellent wedding videos. But why does he devote so much time to this hobby? It's um, a demanding thing to get a wedding recording right. Most of the pleasure comes from getting it right and from seeing the pleasure on the couple's faces when they watch it afterwards. Thank you.